two gametes of sexual reproduction are sperm and egg. Did you notice the large size difference between the sperm and the egg? There's a reason for this, but let's see how their formation differs from one another first. The creation of sperm is called spermatogenesis. It starts with a diploid cell called a primary spermatocyte, and after meiosis I, it forms two secondary spermatocytes, which are haploid, but have a duplicate chromatid with them. After meiosis II, all the cells are haploid, which in humans means they'll have 23 chromosomes. The haploid spermatids will mature into sperm, which will then be motile and ready to fertilize an egg. The creation of an egg, also known as an ovum, is called oogenesis. Like spermatogenesis, we'll start with a diploid cell called a primary oocyte. But after meiosis I, the cytoplasm is divided unevenly, and one cell gets most of the cytoplasm. The cell with the most cytoplasm is called the secondary oocyte, and the other small cell is a polar body. Both of the cells are haploid, with all chromosomes duplicated. After meiosis II, the secondary oocyte is again divided unevenly, and most of the cytoplasm goes to the ootid, which will mature into an ovum. This ovum will have all the organelles, including the mitochondria. Even though only one mature ovum is created by the one oocyte in oogenesis, females are still born with millions of cells and will release hundreds in their lifetime. Not every cell created by one individual is the same. In fact, they're all very different. Genetic recombination from crossing over and independent assortment during meiosis lead to genetic variation and differences in each sperm and egg. This is why brothers and sisters don't all look identical. Now, the whole point of making sperm and egg is for fertilization to make offspring, babies. Once the haploid set of chromosomes from the sperm are released into the egg, the two sets of chromosomes combine, creating one diploid zygote, which will grow and mature over time into the offspring. We all started out this way, just a tiny cell the size of a grain of sand. But sometimes things don't always go so smoothly. Errors during meiosis can cause non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is a failure of homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids to separate during meiosis. Here's one of those cases. During metaphase 1, everything is lined up as expected. But during anaphase 1, a chromosome is pulled to the wrong side, which leads to gametes with incorrect numbers. Some will have an extra chromosome, and some will have one less. This could lead to a variety of issues. While most of these cases will lead to miscarriage, some disorders are not life-threatening. Here are some examples of disorders that can occur as a result of non-disjunction. Probably the most widely known one is Down syndrome. In this case, there is an extra 21st chromosome, which can lead to mental impairment and stunted growth, among other things. Kleinfelter syndrome occurs when there's an extra X chromosome in the standard male karyotype. This can lead to weaker muscles and bones, less testosterone, and sterility. One of the only cases of monosomy, where there's one less chromosome, is Turner syndrome. In this case, the second X sex chromosome is missing. The female will be sterile and have shorter stature and a web neck, but might not have any mental impairments. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.